Well, I finally got on this board of mail to me immediately. It is uh, Sinful Sunday in my city, Chicago, March the 20th, 20, 22, so they say. Um, they say a lot of things, right? Let's talk about uh, people thinking they slick, like the slick boys and stuff. A.K.A. the undercover police, you know, the ones that come out of a uniform and try to blend in with civilians and try to trick people into confessing or snaking a nigga out their legacy or whatever and stuff. You know, I, I could have been the police. I done solved most shit, including my my so-called case and stuff, which I don't have other than the fact that I've been ducking goddamn bullets all my life and haters and trolls and gold diggers and opportunistic people. You understand what I'm saying? Um, me being an originator of rap music, let's just talk business and shit for real, for real, and money and, you know, when motherfuckers get slighted and stuff and left for dead. Now, they, this is what my haters thought. I have had time to figure them out and stuff. You know, I didn't have time before because I was always... You know, under pressure, trying to make money and stuff, you know, while elevating them. You know, that's why they put me in music. So, you know, I could pick out all the things that I like and stuff. And, you know, I like nice things and stuff. And I like nice music. And, you know, I like good looking people. And I like bugaboos also sometimes and stuff. It all depends on the situation, I guess, or whatever. But because I need to make an honest living and the radio stations and you know, things of that nature, studios or whatever, industry, music industry, wanted to, you know, uh, make a lot of money. And they knew, and they still know, I'm the originator of uh, rap music, and that's the highest, of course, John would pay in, you know, of uh, music, you know, there is and still flourishing. If you really listen, they don't really play nothing else. I used to sell gospel blues, rhythm blues, rap and jazz for your ass, and towards the end, you know, I even, you know, sold um, Caucasian music, soft rock, and a little country and stuff. But you don't hardly hear none of that because they're trying to eliminate the music and communication and bring in slavery and try to um, kill me or, you know, railroad me one more time and stuff and put me away so people would forget, like, out of sight, out of mind, they come up with some new shit. You know, they got this one guy. He passing out millions of dollars in gas and things of that nature or whatever. Why, you know, I'm sitting here walking because they didn't stole my car May 31st, 2008. Even though they was going to let me go three days later and stuff, the police. But I knew, you know, it wasn't going to be to my advantage. It was just a scare tactic and fear they was trying to put on me and stuff to um, not continue telling you my truth, which is, you know, I'm the reason why Oprah Winfrey stayed on the air for 25 years and the reason why she got off the air on my birthday, May 25th of 2011, because I gave her my true child abuse rap at the age of 17 in 1984, okay? And then The Color Purple came out in 1985. All you have to do is kind of keep up with the money and the timelines, and yeah, they're trying to switch things around, so you have to be careful about that. And to prove it, uh, Marsha Bruce Matters III came out with, cleaning out my closet and he mentioned being a couple of months old in 1973 but then he said he was born in 1972 if you google it so that's the proof on that it's not what you know it's what you can prove first they this is what they do first they abuse you this is what i've experienced and stuff and i'm sure somebody can relate first they abuse you then they work you like a sex slave or a hebrew slave or both then, you know, when you try to tell your truth, so you start coming up with things on your own and start realizing you haven't made any money off of what you, you know, slave for and everybody else has prospered. Then they, you know, ignore you as if they don't know, you know, what time it is and stuff. And then they railroad you and then they kill you in that order and stuff. So I'm, now they're ignoring me and the railroad has always been in effect but now it's, it's amping up it's like it's picking up speed and stuff and definitely they have tried to kill me since i posted my first ever youtube video mary mac versus the fat black oprah winfrey november of 2007 and my child abuse rap that uh pertain uh ways to handle child abuse victims including the police treating them you know a little better than they have treated me since i posted 
those two videos in 2007 and this being 2022 so they say and i've caught more hell since then been in prison been tased in my kidney got beat up by the police scar on my face or whatever and stuff um slept on a police first district floor on mother's day may 8th when part of my child abuse rap you know Mentioned me sleeping on the floor, never asked them for more. They beat me, stumped me, burned me, everything I asked myself over and over again. How could this be a family? Into the age of six, I felt like a brick. No love, no hugs, just a swift kick. I've been kicked in my stomach by the police and stuff to the point I had to say, I'm a girl, I'm a girl. So basically they trying to pull that fear monger shit on me because Tupac told them, you know, fear is greater than love. But in AA they say fear stands for Facing everything and recover, covering, or fear everything and run. And um, of course, you know, uh, Oprah Winfrey said she gonna run on and see what the end gonna be in her song that she did. You understand what I'm saying? You know, when they heard my voice in 1995, um, added to the Martin Luther King, I Have a Dream speech, you know, I said, well, what? don't forget the women, but I didn't know if you flipped the W. You get more men. It's like I didn't know love spelled backwards is evil until, you know, Marshall Bruce Mattis III pointed that out. Now, I was listening to some Whitney Houston, Sissy Houston videos, uh, Whitney Houston mother, Sissy Houston video, and they talked about Eminem Records and Elvis Presley. See, the older people, they know what time it is. New. Back in the day, they used to say, You'd be like, hey, what's going on? They say, it's for me to know and for you to find out. And then, you know, I say, well, if I find out, because, you know, they say, if I tell you, I got to kill you. So I say, if I find out, do I get to kill you? You understand what I'm saying? Look, I ain't trying to kill nobody, but I don't want nobody killing me. You understand what I'm saying? Softly, hard, or whatever the case may be, color purple motherfuckers. You understand what I'm saying? Because, um, you know, damn well you heard me. In 1995, you know you heard me. You understand what I'm saying? Real so. And, you you know, y'all felt some kind of way or whatever. And I told y'all, you know, pretty much how to, you know, handle me and stuff. You know, with kid gloves pretty much and stuff. But not to the point where you're trying to fuck me one last time like doo and kill me and keep all the money and stuff. See, we generated too much money. You have to think about the lottery. It used to come out once a day. You understand what I'm saying? One of all them scratch offs and all that and stuff. Now, see, see, they didn't got a hold to a good thing. And it's a sure thing pretty much because when my higher power, you know, step up to the plate, it's grand slam home run all day. But if the devil give you something, they're going to take it back. And that's why I'm in the situation I'm in now because everything I've worked my ass off, they either stolen, got, got it back some kind of way by, you know, provoke me some kind of way to lose it or whatever and stuff, having it put me in a compromised position. It's like I am now. They trying to, you know, take away my little social security that I did not even want in 1995 because I knew, you know, my story was bigger than, you know, what I told them in 1995. I knew it was going to be real big. And if they wanted me to have anything in 1995, they would have gave me $2 million tax-free like I told them. I said, just give me $2 million tax-free and the rest could go to charity. At the time, I didn't know Oprah was worth between 300 and $500 million and stuff at the time. That's how greedy these people is. I'm not even worth $2 million tax-free. Now, I would still take that $2 million tax-free from Oprah Winfrey plus interest and maybe, you know, ballpark figure of a billion dollars and stuff for all the pain and suffering mental anguish i've had to go through you understand i'm saying real talk and the fact that you know she's still mocking me and trolling and got her people you know stalking and provoking and you know harassing and you know disrespecting i mean i was real cool calm and collected even after 1995 after they put me on the um psych ward and stuff for real you understand what i'm saying for nothing other than you know me trying to figure out why is these people harassing me and stuff other than the money, the humiliation that I'm giving them and stuff. And uh, the fact that they ain't thinking about it themselves. And I ain't even think about all this. I'm just freestyling for the most part. Like they out, they troll. Everything I do, they come up with it, you know, put it out there, mass production or whatever. I'm not the only one. I just can't understand why everybody else not standing up. Maybe they sold out and stuff. What they promised y'all, million dollars and stuff. When I know I'm worth a zillion, sure, it's easy to give y'all a fucking billion when there's so much leftovers left over and stuff for real for them. 
Yes, there. And then they can still control y'all and stuff. And if they want to, they can come take that billion back and, you know, put you in um, FEMA camps, prison, psych wars, you know, things of that nature and stuff. Kill you, you know. I mean, how much is your soul really worth? Because it's not worth it when the truth stands. It stands forever. And like Martin Luther King said, whose name is real name is Michael. Uh, truth that crushed the earth will rise again. And I've been crushing concrete all around the world and stuff. I'm pretty sure it's not just in Chicago that they're trying to get rid of the truth and stuff for real, but I'm everywhere. I'm here, there, everywhere, even your place. I ain't fake. I'm Mary Mac rocking the fakes. It's like a chase when you look for me. People asking where I might be, wherever I am. There's a lot of dead presidents in my hand. You can understand that with the way I am, God-fearing, People say fake. I say, who gives a damn? Real talk. So that's my shit. You understand what I'm saying? So, you know, if I wrote that in the 90s or late 80s and stuff, you understand? You know, if I wanted to be a rapper, I could have been a rapper. But I allowed the rappers to come up because everybody can't sing and everybody wanted to tell their story their way and stuff. And now you got the white people telling real news more than uh, people of color and stuff. Colored people are doing the most ignorant stuff and white people looking like saints and stuff when they the main motherfuckers and stuff that's trying to oppress me and kill me and stuff. What y'all gonna wait till they kill me and then y'all gonna stand up and shit? By then it's gonna be too late. Okay, I try to tell you I don't speak this loud about something I don't know. I told them that in 1995, 04, whatever the fuck it was, 96, whatever. You understand what I'm saying? And y'all still taking me for a joke and stuff now. I got cancer. They gave it to me, you know, the day after Mother's Day after they had me sleeping on the floor. May 8th of uh, 2016 at the first district police station in my city, Chicago, after attending the uh, Alcoholics Anonymous meeting. And now that I figure to be probably Atheist Anonymous because of pictures like this that I'm finding around the city. See, everything was legit in the beginning. And then the Satan this creeped in and stuff for real. And y'all just forgot about the mission to save ourselves. You see that needle? Yeah, see, they, they want to stick me one last time because for six months in 2016, with 19 years of sobriety, you know, they wanted to, you know, get me to snap and stuff. And, you know, they held me down May 9th of 2016 on the Cook County psych ward or whatever, which you supposed to not be doing. And I told the motherfuckers there ain't nothing wrong with me and stuff. Why, you know, I'm sober. I don't drink drugs, smoke, or fornicate. And I had 19 years of sobriety. I have 25 years come Christmas this year, 2022. So ain't nothing changed and shit. They thought if they stuck me for six months, because it took me like six months when I was on crack back in the day, you know, to want to kill my ex-girlfriend for five dollars but you know i ain't killer because she gave me the five dollars and i wouldn't have killed her any damn way i probably would have robbed her and stuff but <laughs> i just say it these are people you dealing with i just so happen to be in tune with my you know self-worth and my higher power helping me out along the way it's only be me been me and my higher power everybody else is just using my higher power to come up off of and then think they if I die, they not go die. Really, my higher power will kill y'all for me. Real fucking soak. And you keep fucking with me and thinking it's a joke. I promise you, it is not. Okay, I don't speak this loud like I told. I saw him, I don't know and shit. So yeah, for six months, the motherfuckers stuck me in 2016 and thought I'd go off. The doctor was so mad because I was so professional about it. I wrote a whole book called Liquid Hell and shit. Believe me, somebody got it. Please mass produce that shit and give it away for free, for real, so people can know what time it is behind closed doors and stuff because they give me one more time. They're going to treat me like Sandra Bland and open up my eyes and shit real fucking talk real wide and act like it's my photo shoot. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm just saying, they ain't nothing nice and shit. That's why you got to keep the pressure on them and not me and stuff. They trying to make me a recluse so I won't out of sight, out of mind. Won't come outside. Shit, fuck that. I'm the only motherfucker been doing this, you know, besides me and my higher power. So you know I can't stop, not even for the cops. That's what I told them motherfuckers. We don't stop, not even for the cops, nigga. I am music and shit. So if y'all was real Mary McAmyra's, you know, y'all would have stood up by now and stuff. I'm the, worth the most. And they told me that for real white people before they closed down my Chase Bank account. I never seen a penny of that money other than trying to uh, maintain what I got going on as far as, you know, day-to-day uh, -day living and shit. They done stole all my good shit, pictures, friends, Mary McAmyra, business legacy. You understand what I'm saying? But they ain't going to get away with that stuff because when I die, we all die. And if you think, like um, Martin Luther King said, 
You can go back to business as usual. You'd be a damn fool. You understand what I'm saying? Because I am the business, motherfucker. Real fucking talk. I'm the game changer. And I ain't stopping, not even for the cops. With that, it's good to do for me, Lee. That's good to me, Lee.